Hello YouTube and Happy New Year everybody! It's 2014. Now I know for some of my viewers it's already January 2nd, but for me it's still January 1st. And welcome to my new desktop. This always won't be this way because I'll probably bounce back and forth. But, just to give you guys a little heads up, my beautiful wife bought me a new laptop for Christmas. And of course she did an excellent job picking everything that I wanted because I chose the specs. <laughs> but with that comes the horribleness of UEFI. Oh, I have never seen such a terrible, horrible, despicable technology that just makes it a pain in the Watusi to do anything decent outside of the Windows environment. Now, at first, I wanted to blame Windows for this, and I wanted to scream, Microsoft, what have you done? But it's not Microsoft's fault. After I was doing a lot of research, I found out that Intel developed this horrible atrocity. HP helped to continue it. And now it looks like Microsoft has embraced it and forced everybody to use it if they're going to use Windows 8. Yeah, this system, of course, came with Windows 8. And had I known this, although I don't think I had a choice. I really don't. Unless I wanted to buy older piece of hardware that you know didn't have EFI BIOS, it's that's I don't think that's possible. You know, it, it, it's like when when the three and a half inch floppy, when the five and a quarter inch floppy uh, were being removed from the specs of hardware, and I screamed. How can we live without a three and a half inch or a five and a quarter floppy? What am I going to do? I suddenly realized I'm going to have to live with it because I don't exactly have a choice. Now granted, when I first bought my computer with a five and a quarter inch floppy, the first thing I did was run out and buy a five and a quarter inch floppy uh, drive and throw it in there and make it so it could work. I still had five and a quarter inch floppies. What am I going to do with all the technology? The same thing happened with a three and a half inch drive. When it was removed from the hardware specs, what I do, I jumped right in there and bought another three and a half inch hard drive, or not three and a half inch, or three and a half inch drive, floppy drive, threw it in the machine. Well, nowadays computers aren't coming. It was hard to find one, for instance, that had a DVD burner and, and slot. And I didn't want to go with a system that it had at least some sort of removable media. Uh, that like a DVD player of, of sorts so that's the new thing I guess and, and like I said what choice do you really have when technology moves on we need to either embrace it or we get stuck in the dark age so as you can see I've got Gen 2 running I've got it working with EFI now the biggest thing is because Windows wants to take over and has some sort of way of resetting, and I can probably fix this eventually, but right now I just do the workaround. But because it does something to it and resets it every time you reboot, it wants to boot into Windows 8. And while I've gotten something called REFIND or Refined installed for booting into the Linux partitions, I have to manually tell it every boot to go and use that boot manager so that I can choose whether I want to go into the Windows environment or the Linux environment. Gen 2 right now I have installed and I also have Linux Mint Debi Edition on another partition. Now this computer has two hard drives so I was able to place a second hard drive in so I didn't touch the Windows partitioning. And also as a test to see if it was Windows that was really causing all my headaches and woes, I took out all the hard drives, I booted strictly into a blank hard drive with no EFI partitions, nothing on it at all, and it was still hosed and screwed up. So it's, you know, I can't blame Microsoft. This junk is just something that I know eventually I'll sit back and I'll probably watch this again and uh, even a year maybe and say 
it's just a matter of one of those things where technology, the software, the operating system, Linux, once again has to catch up to the new technology that's being thrown out there. I don't think this was set up to be a, well, maybe it was set up to be a thorn in Linux side, but I don't think this was set up to force everybody into a Windows 8 environment or a Microsoft OS. I mean, that just seems crazy and silly. No one would try to force us to a decision that we wouldn't want, would they? Nah, nah, nah. Anyway, because of the whole taking over the boot process, I have to hit escape Every time I reboot the computer, hit F9 to go in the boot menu, choose Refine's boot manager to boot from, or go into load from an EFI file, and then find the file and run it. Now, I can probably later on, once I get more comfortable with EFI, change that and figure a way to force the default, <coughs> rename some files, throw them in the right directory, spoof the XF86, or whatever the file name is. I can't remember off the top of my head. And I could probably fix that. For now, though, this works. I have another huge issue, though. EFI frame buffer. If I use the EFI frame buffer on this machine, I get a GUI that pops up immediately and shows me everything that's loading as Gen 2's kernel starts and loads in, and then as all the services start and gets me to the login screen. However, if I use the EFI frame buffer, then the Intel drivers that are built for this machine, for the graphics, it has a fourth generation Intel uh, video card, it will not start. They will fail. They will not allow you to run XORG with them. And so you're forced to use a frame buffer device for your driver for video for XORG. Now when you do that, Everything at first appears to be good, you think, until you try to run a flash program in YouTube and your videos won't work, your th video acceleration won't work, any applications that require faster graphics don't work, and you so you say, okay, great, well, if this was 10, 15 years ago when you were just happy to have a display, then I would just be happy to say, I got it working yay but I'm not happy that's not right so I've fiddled with it and fiddled with it and I hope somebody out there who's a Gen 2 enthusiast has new hardware maybe has figured this out because I have read everywhere on this done all kinds of research on the internet looked all over the Gen 2 forums for this and I can't figure it out this is my solution for right now I built my kernel, I, got, I built two kernels, one with EFI frame buffer support, one without EFI frame buffer support. In the kernel that I built without EFI frame buffer support, I installed the Intel DRM, DRA, DRI um, video drivers, and in the one with EFI support, I just have it with the, that frame buffer and that's it. because. It won't work otherwise. And then if I boot into the system that the, with the kernel without EFI frame buffer, because you can only build it into the kernel, you can't build it as a module, because at first I thought, well, maybe if I built it as a module, I could load it, boot, get my GUI, unload the module, load the Intel module, and I'd be good. No, you can't do that. You have to build it into the kernel. Now, when this happens, I can boot to Gen 2, but I get a blank screen with nothing in it at all. It only takes about 12 seconds for my Gen 2 to boot from the time that it takes over to it gets to the login screen. So 12 seconds I have to count out or I have to just sit there and hum for a while and try to distract myself. And then with a blank screen and nothing there, I type in my username, my password, type in start X. I count another 12 seconds and voila! I've got a desktop. I've got 3D support. I've got accelerated graphics. I'm getting decent. No, uh, let me show you here. I mean, it's not the best, but it works. If I do a GLX Gears here, 
you'll see that I should be getting about 60 frames per second. And that's good. That works. That, that makes a lot of things run smoothly. Now, if I ran this same test inside of the system, the, the kernel with EFI frame buffer, the same test would give me three to five frames per second if I was lucky. Now, as this is set up with this part, once I get into my GUI, everything runs well. Yeah, I can play my games, I can get into Minecraft, I can watch videos on YouTube, I can capture screen, everything is wonderful. I can even exit out of Xorg and then my console is using the Intel driver and I've got video screen and everything works great. So I'm only missing that boot up process because of the EFI frame buffer. If anybody has an idea, I've tried using the Visa frame buffer like I've used in the past. I've tried using the U-Visa frame buffer. It still doesn't work. You can't build the Intel frame buffer if you create the Intel driver. So I try it both ways with or without. That doesn't help. The only way I have figured out how to get the boot up process to display for me and I've tried all kinds of boot command lines and going crazy is to use the EFI frame buffer but it, it's not worth it because then you just don't have a very usable system now what's interesting is when I set up Linux Mint Debian Edition I got a screen right away I've got I got the whole loading process that came up and using a Visa video uh, driver, not the Intel driver, I can get Xorg to work out of the box and everything looks good. However, using the Visa video driver, some 3D doesn't work so well and I have issues with running through things like Minecraft on the computer and it, it's still kind of flaky and acts really laggy but for the most part other things still work I can still do video with YouTube I can still watch videos my multimedia all works but that brings me to another issue that I'm running into so that's I think three issues and that is the sound quality now for some reason you know this system here has I think a 4.1 surround sound built into it including a subwoofer which w sounds awesome when you're inside of the Windows environment and also if you're in Linux or with Gen 2 if you plug in the headphones it's it's like wow this is like a full stereo everything is just the sound is great but then you plug in through your speakers and it sounds tinny and horrible through Gen 2 now, interesting enough, I found something inside of you, not Ubuntu, but under Debian about using something called HDA Jack. Uh, what is it again? Let me find it here. HDA Jack Retask. Now, when I ran HDA Jack Retask and I retask certain areas, I was actually inside of the LMDE edition able to get the sound through the speakers to sound perfect, beautiful, just like in the Windows environment. However, inside of the Gen 2, I get an error every time it tries to set the drivers and the new configurations, and it fails. Now, the only thing I can see that's different is that LMDE is using Pulse Audio and loading all of the audio drivers as modules, whereas I take it and put them all in as a kernel feature because it's built into the system you know my philosophy if it's on the system in the system build it into the kernel if you're gonna plug it in like a joystick or or external device then make it a module and so that's why I built that the way that way it also I don't worry have to worry about loading right modules and all that sort of thing but I still don't I mean sound works and it's okay it's acceptable for now but yeah that's all I can do so I'll be beginning to do a few videos about Gen 2 in the EFI environment 
And I've been thinking about whether or not I really want to continue with the Gen 2 and reviews because, man, after doing those updates and the install videos, I'm kind of running out of things. And it's difficult sometimes to do testing in a, in a live environment. But now that I have two machines running Gen 2, uh, my old laptop and this one here, maybe I can also think of some stuff. But let me know what you think. And please, anybody out there who has ideas about Gen 2 and the EFI frame buffer for booting up into it or utilizing uh, and configuring the ALSA better. Now, one thing I did try to do and it failed. I'm going to take it off. I'm not a big fan of Pulse Audio, but I went ahead and installed it per the, the Gen 2 files wiki and all that. And sound is still working. Sound still looks good. But I still haven't been able to make the full system really work well. It didn't fix the HDA jack retask option at all, which is what I was hoping it might repair. But if anybody has any ideas about that with the EFI frame buffer or ALSA and using this, this new machine is, I bought it from, from Best Buy. It is a um, HP m 7 J020DX, I believe. It does have some pretty decent specs. The only thing about it that I didn't like was the fact that I would have preferred to have an ATI or NVIDIA driver for my video with dedicated video RAM instead of shared video RAM. But I figured I could probably deal with, with that based upon the other specs that it has. I haven't tried to get touch screen to work on it because it, it just doesn't seem to work proper, at least in Gen 2. However, I will admit I tried the 16 version of Linux Mint, which is Ubuntu based, and out of the box the touch screen on this thing worked without a problem, without a flaw. So I know it does work in, in Linux, it's just a matter of configuring it. So thank you all for watching. If it's morning, evening, noon, or night, whatever you're having, enjoy it. Thank you for last year's views and all that. I hope this new year is wonderful to everybody. The best wishes to all. Stay in touch. Keep writing. Keep sending messages. Keep me on track with my Gen 2 videos. And have a good day. Bye, everybody.